Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your next session of Group Therapy. I am King Bear in the building. Michelle K. Cav the Truth Seeker. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a really special show for you today. <laughs> We're going to do a little talking today. We're going to delve into some special topics. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let us know what you think about the... Uh, the show and you know feel free to the pipe in on anything because we're always listening so you guys ready to get to it yeah i yep. definitely want to get into this all right yep. so without further ado let's get to it one thing we're talking about with leaders is if you go to group therapy and this is something that i emphasize no two group leaders are necessarily going to lead group in the same way We are years. so dumbed down that we're not going to react. Mm -hmm. Because at this point... the Gen Z and the Gen... They don't X, know no better. Yeah, Z and Millenniums are like... Clueless. They're right. not even... They're surrounded and all that. They're not even thinking about what's Space going on in the races. And that. Right, right. Oh, because... No oh, she's black. I'm voting for her. She's a woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get her in there. Right. Oh, she's a nigga. Because when you if think they, about it... Just if, like Obama, everybody's If crying, they oh, did oh, care... Oh, we got the first black person. Black our person fight more. wouldn't be... At least four years ago, mm -mm. uh eighty year old versus a mm -hmm. seventy five year old. Mm -hmm. Like where is your black. generation's leadership? They, where are they? They right. don't have none. Exactly. At all. Exactly. And that's why I said they're gonna be lost. Yep. Because if this is why we got now, yep. and they have yep. none up a, you none. a rapper. <laughs> oh God, if you even get <laughs> who Kanye West when they were talking about all oh, yeah. the dumb people, that would be their generation <laughs> yep. coming up. Is the the people that's in the rap game, all them people on the street, because that's what they see and know now. They don't have no clue of how this world is working. They don't none. know about social security. They don't know about retirement. None of that. So and that's the side up side up you're talking about because with their ignorance, mm -hmm. you know, our generation is the last generation mm -hmm. that they fed us the voodoo yeah. of hey. Social Security is going to be gone by the time oh, you're old. Yeah. And we were concerned. Yeah. Because I remember being 21 and being like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't even know what Social Security is. Yeah. But why the fuck is it going on my watch? Right. Right. Like, my grandmother's getting so... Why don't I get it? Right. Why you I got to work. The time you yeah, get yeah. To right. Get why Why I got to be gone for yeah. me? Because we're So they to be, skipped us. We're so they said... We're holding it down for the baby boomers. Right. Right. But if it's nothing to hold down for them, and it ain't got nothing for us. And, and we're not true. reproducing. No. Right. We only have like, oh, one at a time generational but see, babies. But we're not see. having like the multiple babies like my parents did, mm -hmm. you know, six, seven children. Well, you are, but they're not even doing anything. Right. And no, see, but, I but went I'm back. Saying, but the average woman my our age from, uh, uh, how, how old are you? Uh, I don't know. Almost 50. So you're in, in you're, you're 40? 47. All right. So, uh, from, let's We're say, all in the same generation in here. Saying, we but, all exes. No, no, no. I'm just saying, but, but from like 45, I would say, mm -hmm. 45 to, to 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 55, that 10 year gap. I mean, that 10 year uh, uh, span is the ones we were not really having more than four, more than two or three children. Most women my age, uh, our age, I should say, I had two. That's what I'm saying. We're it's the whole to, generation. To two. Generation so, X goes from 1965 to 1980. Right. So it's that that si All right, let's say that 16 that year thing. gap, right. 15, 16 year gap. So you're right. That generation has considerably less babies. Yeah. Right. Right. Because our generation was like, we're not going to be like the mm -hmm. baby woman. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. Right. You seen with your parents right. had seven, my, eight my, kids right. and my, ten yeah. kids and stuff. I'm the last of seven. See. So my brother, who's the oldest, is... He would have been 69 as he passed last year, but my whole point, he only had two. Mm -hmm. But he was making good money. He was in the Air Force for 23 years. Because he only had two kids. Right. Imagine if he mm -hmm. had five or six no, or seven. No, he would have been. But baby boomers so, were the last generation where American trade mattered. Right. Once we became the, the, the steers of the ship, one generation did, American trade no longer mattered. Because we were more fixated in technology. Mm -hmm. So we didn't care about American trade. We didn't care about iron working and motherfucking woodworking and carpentry. We'd be like, yo, let the lowest do that. We'll be the college educated ones. 
and then we'll go compete with the tech agents and we'll just let the Mexicans and anybody else who wants to come in and they, they can do that shit. We were good with that. That's a Generation X thing. But we, so we of, started that. A lot of people fell into that bandwagon and now have degrees, two degree masters, and they still working out, you know, like... Right, yeah. but it was... An hour job. Right, but that was our generation that did that. The baby boomers didn't care about degrees. Uh -uh. It wasn't a big thing to them. No. Because a baby boomer can go be a train engineer for 50 years yeah, and, retire. and retire great. Like they could earlier. be a cop, no degree... 40 years, retire early. great, yeah. fire department, all these things. Right. Generation X, we were like, we'll have none of that. Mm -mm. That's not our thing. Mm -mm. We want to sit down, get in front of this new computer <laughs> thing, is, and we can make twice the amount of money, money. No, but that was and so not do none of that shit. No, but Nothing. That, that's, that was, it's, it's, it's good that it's, it's applicable and it's, you know, you can gain those degrees to do such. But that was a smoke screen to me in my mind because <clears throat> not everybody's gonna be the superstar on the basketball team graduating. They ain't gonna have to be. Not everybody's gonna be this mm -mm. computer tech making a, 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 a six figures. Here's but the issue. Every out of every ten graduates, only probably five of them are gonna be doing right. But here's the job. here's the They're issue. Up. So what's gonna happen to the other five? They're gonna be unemployed, rotating into these agencies, trying to get jobs here and there once in a while. Well, you know, not not gainfully employed to create social security or put back into social security because, because they, you're always jumping around to different jobs and jobs and jobs and jobs and you're not creating a business. But here's here, here's the, the issue. Generation. Here's the issue. And it's not really an they're issue. Teaching, it's an advantage. My whole point is this. They're not it's, teaching those to become uh -uh. creators right. of business. Uh -uh. Right. But, but to create right. job, job generation. But they're not doing it well, we're not doing it because we didn't know how. Mm -mm. That's the thing. See, and here's here's the advantage for you. See, you come from a typically older family. So your your parents were older boomers. See, my, our, well, I guess me and no, your parents. My, my, my parents are from the silent generation. Before okay, yeah, yeah, because you, boom. yeah, right. My parents so, were born in the and 30s. See, so, right. Early 30s. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, your parents. <laughs> My father was born in 1931, and my mother yeah, was born in 1931. Right, so you got the traditions, you got the traditions, and you got the instillment that right. the boomers got. Mm -hmm. Me and Michelle, we got mm -hmm. what Generation gets, Generation X right. gets. Mm -hmm. You didn't get that. You got to witness it mm -hmm. while being a Generation Xer, That's crazy. but you got mm -hmm. taught while yeah. being a boomer. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So you see things from a different light than what we saw. Mm -hmm. And that's what the problem is. So you can understand where it comes from, where power and industry and building your own business and things and how that makes sense. And, and that's an advantage different. for you. It was, because yeah. I was right. kind of always... However, the guys my age, because and they were like, "Yo, why are you talking that big stuff?" From? Because I think that generation too, they had to struggle. They had to, exactly. they right. had to really prove a lot of things. We right. had to be trying to, what was it, racism, all of that. They right. had to overcome. So they had a lot of more leaders and right. that right. really was like, "Okay, right. well, we got to." And forget this generation. They right. they went above their generation, right? And they was out there. This generation now. They have nobody to no say, struggle. you know what? No, no type of There's struggle. Of, nothing. They don't even know what struggle is. My, right. and, and on top of that, my parents are very uh, uh, specific with the struggle because they came from another country. Right. Like other so ones you would know these, that. Right. Coming. It was a So simple. it's like taking a big chance. You're going to another right. country. You don't know nothing about it. Right. You got to start from ground zero. Mm-hmm. We got right. a penny pension. That's why my mother was a uh, money collector. It's called, you know, like Susu money. But you know they call it partner money. My mother was the um the cap not captain but the the, the banker. She bro, held, I saw bro. her. You you talking about a mentality you from nineteen thirties? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you I, know that I, whole I, Chinese when they come to the country and they live together mm -hmm. and they say, okay, now you we save money mm -hmm. and we want to create the next business for, yeah. for cousins. Right. That's not gonna be here. But that's and right. They, and, they, <laughs> it was instilled in, in my like I saw it in my house. Do, they were doing this. Right, but in the rest of our houses that's in our generation mm -hmm. that you're a part of, we weren't taught that. Mm -hmm. And then the thing was, when Generation X took over, we were the first generation that technology became profitable. Yeah. 
So we didn't have to because the the silent generation and the boomers, they were like, okay, I can work a job making ten, twelve dollars an hour. I can work hard and I can save for my family and I could be a success. Right. When our generation started working, the dot com era. Mm -hmm. You walk out of a college classroom and they give you seventy thousand right. dollars. Numbers unheard of for the silent generation or the boomers right. to walk out of a classroom Start and make thinking. that no experience yeah. right out the gate. They had to work so, over ten years to get that, mm -hmm. before and, they got and you could get it right out of a classroom. So the the instillment of hard work and of dedicating and of saving and all that. That wasn't part of Generation X. Right. Nope. Now, the the caveat to that is why the millennials, the Gen Yers, the Gen Zers, well, I guess the millennials and Gen Z are the same thing, yeah. but the Generation A's, the ones that are now little and coming up now, mm -hmm. they have zero foundation because we had no idea how to teach them. Right. We had no clue. Because the boomers couldn't relate to us because silent generation taught the boomers. Right. So the boomers understood because they saw what their parents went through. Right. When it was our turn, the world changed overnight. So even though the boomers was like work hard and stuff, like I watched my dad work in a steel mill, you know, and work hard and stuff like that. And I remember I was, I was not doing good in school. Mm -hmm. And my dad took me to the steel mill and said, you flunk out of school, you're going to be right in here with me in the steel mill. Uh -huh. He took me one day. That <laughs> motherfucker, that ash, that ash was like a foot high. It was hot as hell in there. It was dark. I couldn't breathe. Right. And them damn, every time the furnace would open and that, that iron rod would hit that molten steel, bang! And then it just, sparks was all over the place. I thought I was in hell. It literally felt like hell. It's that was like the first time like, I was I was like, 16 me, years old like, and I I truly respect my parents mm. I looked at my dad and that was the first time that I cursed at my dad <laughs> I looked him dead in his eye and I said fuck <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> he said well he said well keep messing around in school right but it gave and, a different perspective right 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 I work but, with my dad but and see, oh, and I, I did, I climbed somebody. rules to help my dad with housing projects and all this stuff like that all the so time. I get it. But so see, I get what you're saying. but see, mm -hmm. but even though well, that was my men my time. mentality, this, my mentality. See, when my dad came up, working with your parents was an honor. It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what we yeah, do, yeah, work yeah. on. When my dad took me, instantly was. That's not it. <laughs> right. I, 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 no, <laughs> no. You, hell, <laughs> no. Like he would literally come home every night. First of all, it'd be in the middle of summer, and he'd have to wear like six layers of clothing with the big car right. hard jackets, right. and he'd still have open burn marks every single day. And he would work twelve hour shifts uh -huh. and then get overtime. So he was working like sixteen hours a day in the yeah. damn steel mill. Yeah, and he'd come out there burnt up. Yeah, and. He just, you know, that was the 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 boomers. He just, that's what you do. Right. What you do? He took me one day. And I, Fuck that. <laughs> you already knew that was. I already knew. Like, I was sixteen. I said that. There's got to be other things. Right. Over that. So, I started doing better in school, but not I great. Bet you did. Shit. <laughs> Went down there and took that damn ASVAT. <laughs> Scored in the top five percent taking that ASVAT. And the recruiters started coming to the door. I was like, whoever lies to be best, that's where I'm going. Yeah. And years later, oh my. Just <laughs> but that. Because I ain't doing that. <laughs> I'm going to find something else to do. To, spring, to springboard off of what he's saying. So, all of us was born more in the middle to the early 70s, right? Um, I was saying. Middle. At this table, right? Late, but yeah. Middle. Close, middle. To, the, close to the middle. So, my, my, my nephew... Only six years younger than me, so you know he was the baby boomer born. He was the birth. He was the child of one of, but the baby boomer brother that I had. Uh -huh. so my oldest brother. He was the. So anyway, he was born in 1979. At the end okay, of that, so he was like the end of the almost of the. Um, what do they call it? Is that called um 
uh, mm-hmm. Zillennials. Almost. Like, right. almost a that, millennial, but still a Generation Xer. Right. Like, right there on the cusp. Uh-huh. The whole point is, he retired two years. He's 45, 44 now. Yeah, he'll be 45 this year. He retired two years ago mm-hmm. from, from the Air Force. Mm-hmm. So he took that route, like you said, because mm-hmm. my brothers brought him back to the block in the Bronx. Like, you see, he keep messing up. Yeah. yeah. See where I came from? Yeah. He, he scared the hell out of him about the, the neighborhood that we grew up with. It was like, wow. Right. But see, and, and that's he, that's he, the he point. Him, he never grew up in that neighborhood. He grew up in but these kids don't but have that. They don't have that. And it is our fault. He, mm-hmm. As Generation X's, we got to admit it. It is our fault. Because we didn't have that to instill. Because as Generation X's, it's part of our pride. We're selfish as hell. Like, we were the first generation that the Biggie songs was holding true. Get money. Right, right. Like, we was like, yo, <laughs> I'm going out there. Yo, I could make this bread. I could get this money. And we didn't have to work hard to right. get it. So, even when we had our kids, we were one of the first generations that, you know, a single mom or a single parent could go out there, make the bread, and be like, you know what? I can have Big Mama watch the kid, or I can have a babysitter watch the kid, but I could go out there, I could work at corporate America, I can make these, I can make big ducats, and I could pay for my kids to be in the better schools and stuff like that. That's where we so, were wrong, Right, that's where <laughs> we was wrong. That's where we found it. Yep. Instead of going back to the, the home yep. fundamentals <laughs> that the boomers had, yep. we decided somebody else would be better to yep. raise our kids. Because it was more like you didn't want them to struggle like you did. Exactly. You didn't want That's them to where have we that fucked same exact thing. Right you want to be like, well, I'm on, I don't want my kids to go like this. But that's what made us who we are now. Solid. And fun. we messed up. We messed I, up. I, I, I looked at that years ago and I was like, why well, didn't have that same mentality? Because I wanted better. Wanted better. I wanted I exactly. moved my kids out of the hood. Well, we weren't in the hood, but in a better right. situation. And I took them out of that environment. Even though they still went back to it a little bit, it was like, I think if I had to just struggled where I was uh-huh. and see that you have to really work hard yep. and all that, they would have been nail on the head, but Michelle yep. K. That is yep. it yep. in a nutshell. Yep. We had that mentality. Yep. We want our kids yep. to be better. Better than what we was. And boomers and silent generations yep. didn't say that. Mm-mm. They were like, we are about making sure our family's mm-hmm. good. And I'm going to work hard so my family's good. Right. We didn't do the... Mm-mm. We didn't build in a sense of entitlement. Mm, the yeah. boomers built. Mm. The boomers didn't build that. Mm-mm. Generation X built in the sense of entitlement to the next generation, and they came out to be spoiled yep. brats that yes. think that everything's supposed to be handed yes. to them. Why I can't have this? You right. know, I, I shouldn't even be here. You brought me here, so right. this is what I'm entitled to, and I'm like. And now oh, yeah. that mentality yeah. is having their own kids, <laughs> and it's even worse. Right. So it's it's our fault. Yeah. So yeah. we, yeah. you know, we we can glorify our generation because our generation is awesome. Yeah, but we got to take the fucked up yeah. shit we did as well. But we <laughs> didn't know better. We didn't. We didn't know better. We did. We did. We was really thinking that we was actually doing better than what our parents was doing. Right. Even though we didn't know it was a learning lesson for right. us. We right. We thought it was torture. Oh, they got to do I would not do my kids like y'all said. Right. But right. now, I wish. Well, right. I could have did it all. Right. I look, I, I look Because the real. world changed. It literally changed overnight on us. It did. It because really before did. us, the world was literally the same as it was yep. going all the way back to damn near the the almost 1800. Mm-hmm. From like the 1899s all the way up to the yep. 1950s and 60s, mm-hmm. the world was the same. It was. And then once the 70s came and these damn computers started popping up. Yeah. Yeah. World changed overnight, yeah. Yeah. and oh, we were the ones that dealt once, with it. Once you went from the the beeper, and you got that first cell phone, yep. shit, everybody went stupid, That's and then don't have what MySpace, yep. MySpace and all that My came out and all that. Yeah. What? what? Yeah. Hey, well. <laughs> so that wait all day long for it to come on, and yeah. it was just like I mean before that, I remember go. being in the fifth grade. The so what are you in the fifth grade? Ten, right? <laughs> Yeah, you're 10, you're 10 in the fifth grade? Yeah. yeah. I remember going to class the first, and we got a damn Macintosh computer Macintosh. in there. Oh, and I got, I got that yeah. floppy disk. 
Boy, and I swear, I put it in there yeah. and 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 did my first run, my go to, yeah, my first go to statement, and I got that syntax error, and uh-huh. then I, I figured it out, and I was able to get it to run down a page all the way over, and kept going, and I went home and tried to explain that to my mother. She was just like, What? You what? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you keep learning that. That's some yeah, good stuff. You got a job, you got like, a computer to do what? Uh-huh. They had and I was no like, clue. Yeah, it was. And then I saved it on a floppy disk. <laughs> right. <Is> she... <laughs> what is that? Like our generation oh, now. Okay, man. Right. Right. Space 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 uh huh. When they went by, boy. And they were doing this at the top. The little birds you had to hit. Boop, 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 boop. Oh yeah. When that Atari you. and ColecoVision all of them came out, my mother would come by, walk around, look at that black and white TV, and be like, "What is? What mm-hmm. are they doing? They had no like clue. what? The, they had no that, clue." Go back outside. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, we'll go outside in a minute. Wait, mm-hmm. This, this now, is new. This is awesome. Yep. And then Atari. Awful. Oh, my God. Awful. That was it. Atari Awful. Shit. <laughs> yeah. So we, we're to blame for this state of things mm-hmm. because we didn't teach our kids right. Nope. It depends, though. Like I said, my nephew, he. You he, had he was, some. He grew up at the end of that, that whole era of us. But your and nephew he, is still a Gen Xer, dude. So yeah. he's not. Oh, but Yeah, yeah. But it was which is different. we're the problem, right? No, but I'm saying, but he had a had a hold on his children, to the, because he was my brother was like military with him. You know, he was in the military, and, and my father and his. So kids, what's his kids doing? Who my, Your nephew's kids. He's, one is in college now. The second uh-huh. one is five of them. Uh huh. What is in college? Took, took the college route. Uh-huh. Because Just like my kids. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Right, the same thing. Is what uh-huh. I'm saying. We, so, so which ones is in the trade right now? Working uh-huh. hard like a silent generation. No, 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 no. The other one is about to go to the Air Force, too. No, That's but, what we're talking about. No, but you, but you just said earlier it was our fault why it these is guys... The oh, you say why they don't want the trade. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay, some okay. Exactly. It's not that. I'm not saying that they're all scoundrels and all right, going right, to be right. terrible. It's just some that softer. just took a... Ba- some saw the bullshit yeah. and some didn't. And, right. You know, and if the ones who didn't see it was the ones that, hey, that we talking about. But right, the ones got who got it and be like... But shit, I don't want to be like this, and I'm finna no. do something different. Yeah, but no, I I, I should have just stuck with the plan. Should have let him struggle a little bit. Should have stayed where I was, with my little two bedroom apartment, <laughs> fuck the house, don't get another yeah. car. They was happy and content with what I had until I moved them into something different and upgraded. And then it was like that mentality was like, well, shoot. We here, but I need this more now. And it was like, no, shit, I'm still I'm still trying to be down here. But that's what I did to my generation, to my children. Because right. Because, I because wanted you better. wanted better. Yeah. Just like me. Just like all of us. Generation X wanted better. Yep. For our kids. Because yeah. for some reason, we thought we was, we <laughs> thought we was in hell. We, we thought, really oh did. my God. We really did. And I we don't did. know. And now that I think about it, I wasn't. It wasn't, it right. It was nowhere near. Right. And I'm thinking, what the fuck I was thinking? Like, <laughs> why I just could If somebody just said, Michelle, just do this, I probably would have just been like, all right. But my mind wasn't there. It was, right. It wasn't there. And right. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Well, my, my parents are from the silent generation. I can say it for, for them. <laughs> so old. No, that, no, I'm going to give you an example that I think, I don't think it just they started with us. My mom was born in the 50s, so. Yeah, my grandmother was, my, was born in 38. That was my. That was my oh, yeah. your grandmother. My mother was born in 59. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're old school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He got that boomer right. mentality. I'm just saying that they... They wanted to for the, their children to do better. They didn't want them to go to the hearts, go to work all day with my mom used to say, You see these varicose veins, you don't want to mm-hmm. I gotta work all night, I'm gonna stand up on my foot as a nurse. But I'm saying I think they wanted us to be more that um more e- have an easier access to certain benefits and mm-hmm. job and getting homes more easier. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't that. there. What do you mean? What wasn't there? If they were the silent generation and then their kids were boomers, yeah. they could have wanted better for their kids, right. but they didn't have the technology jump as the boomers. No, they didn't have that. So they still had to do the trades and stuff. They just wanted better opportunities right. for their kids right. within the trades. Well, So then the boomers like, still had to work harder. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I want to say what, it was a 50-50 with my family. 
Because, like, the first half of the family were baby boomers, and the second half, like, me and my brother... Was You're like, not a baby boomer. Stop saying we. <laughs> no, I'm saying... I never said that. I said... I you said, said the first half, we're baby boomers. No, were. They're they, baby uh, boomers. They're, I'm sorry. They were baby boomers. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. The first half of my family were baby boomers. Yeah. Okay. The second half, me and my brother, right before me, we were more like, you know... We were not more kids. like. We were the genetics. Yes. Mm-hmm. So my, my whole... <laughs> You, you know, see how the mentality flips? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, because my sister, who she was a, the last of the first five, she was born in 1962. Mm-hmm. Boomer, right? She right. Was born so she's, the, she's the baby of the, okay. the last of the baby boomer of my family, and then after that, my brother was born in 68, and then coming in 73. So him and I were the ex. Mm-hmm. So I seen both like they, right? You know, they wanted them to be like. Of course, all of us to be more successful than they were. Right, States. right. And we came to America, go to college, that's the way it is, and that's the way you can become successful, and just go to church, and mm-hmm. yada, 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 get a church woman and a man, you know, mm-hmm. get a church uh, a, a partner, and, and, and live a happy life like I've done with my husband, you know, like, right. you see your father and I, we together all these time, we don't... But My father, your father don't go to no clubs after work. That was different back then. They barely right. had clubs. So, so <laughs> no, they didn't. Well, I don't know where we were. They had juke joints. They had hole in the walls and juke joints. <laughs> no, I'm talking about when they came to New York. Come on, New York. I wasn't a den, but we talking about like further back. But uh huh. <laughs> New York had speak easy as juke joints, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? We just didn't call them juke joints, but they was juke joints. <laughs> No, but in general, what I'm saying is they still wanted their children to learn the technology, learn the latest. Cause even my mother was telling me, you know what? Because she, I wanted a DJ set because I wanted to get into the music production and, and at that time, DJ music. Mm-hmm. Because it was big, you know, in the in the 80s. DJ Red Alert and, and, and you know, all these Kid Capri. I, I wanted to be that guy, you know, like mm. to get heavy because I, produ- I was a drummer in church and played the music live drums mm-hmm. so i knew i what i learned well not learn from you but what i saw you did when we were doing our production thing over there i wanted to know all of those the technical parts of mm-hmm. or get to that point where i could be a music producer mm-hmm. behind the technology of music but i learned musical notes and that sort of thing and drumming stand-up drumming so talking to my mother about getting all that equipment to her was like that's no good that what you want to do all of that for that, that, that's not going to make you no money why you want dj equipment get a computer i'll buy you I'm a, i want to buy you a computer i was like i don't want to um you remember the radio shack computer tandy's uh, yeah i was like no, I don't. I was like, Boy, tandy 503 baby this is like 88 <laughs> yeah 88. and she never the tandy like, yeah i was like i was like that's gonna be outdated mom but she didn't understand what i said the software is not gonna be Relevant anymore by another two years, three years. Mm-hmm. Get me the DJ equipment. I can make money now from oh. making mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days, you could make mixtapes and sell them for five dollars a pop. <laughs> so I'm thinking on that level, how to um, curtail that sort of way into making being a self entrepreneur as a child, as a young, te- you know, preteen. Mm-hmm. Hustle. She didn't see it that way, right? <laughs> Hustle. Which most well, well could be complicated. Mm-hmm. Hustle. Well, uh, most yeah. productionists today are rap moguls. That's how they started. These, these, that, but she yeah. thought it was a world of not an underclass, but like she seen it as uh, how would you say um, demonic, if you want to say, or you know, oh, of the world. Yeah. Oh, you want to do all of that? That's not gonna make you nothing. That's not that's that's not a real career, or that's not a real. You know, uh, a hobby per se. Mm. She wanted me to get the. She said, "Oh, you know, see the, 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 the such and such son." You know, like people that we grew up. I grew up. That was my age. Mm-hmm. I don't want to call his name on public, but you know, why yeah, yeah. you see him? Oh, you know, he's he's um he wants the technical stuff and he wants the computer and he's learning how to use it. And I'm like, yeah, ma, I, I, but I'm telling you what I want to do, mm-hmm. and I think that's a part. I'm, I'm only bringing this up because I think that's a part of the. The disconnect between the baby boom, the uh, silent generation from us as Gen X. Mm-hmm. My parents birthed the Gen X, and I'm from that era, but they don't understand what I was trying to connect to say. Right. I seen your hustle. I've been to work with dad. I don't want to end up doing that for the rest right. of my life mm-hmm. to be feeding my child. Mm-hmm. Just work for a living, and it's gonna, you know, 
go to college, but, but still work hard, you know, and work for someone else for the rest of your life. I don't want to do that. Right. Because mm-hmm. my father, no. Right. right. Mm-hmm. But so, the boomers were the same way. Mm-hmm. And the boom, right. Mm-hmm. And the, mm-hmm. You're right. But my, my whole thing is the psychology of um, the generation gaps created the sense of why these children now don't want to really work or they, they'd rather do technology type jobs or certain things. Sim- it's, it's more easy. simple. Yeah. But I was trying to like almost educate my parents on why certain things. But it didn't make sense to them because that wasn't was their like, generation. Right. They knew so, nothing mm-hmm. about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas and our they kids, didn't care. they called me a rebel. They just told me I was just, re- I'm a rebel. Yeah. Oh, you're going to, because one of my older brothers was like that. He was a real quick, fast learning stuff that we're talking about, about um, mm-hmm. religion and conspiracies. He was into that when he was 13. So imagine mm. him as the baby boomer child to his parents <laughs> who are, who are um, you know, uh, uh, a silent era. He looking up like stuff on micro on yeah. microfiche <laughs> <laughs> and encyclopedias. Mm-hmm. And they told what and he was, that book and up. He was, uh, and they, he steady uh, just going. And he was, uh, you know, like into the Rastafarian movement. So he was like a, a almost like a a rebellious looking like he was rebelling against them mm. but smart and, and, and wise intelligent you know and um to them and to them they, we just look like oh that's their they're off in, the, in no man's land the way they mm-hmm. think. we right. need to get them back on straight and this is go to school and you know right get a job and work for a living well right. here's the thing here's the thing if you look at it like this because you are speaking a lot of truths if you look at the generations that came before the silent generation, mm-hmm. you know, the silent generation had their rebellious ones too. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? But they understood each other because the way that the world was, everybody kind of knew because the world was still the same. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? You know, they, the generation, one or two generations before the boomers, the newest things they had were automobiles and planes were just coming into effect. You see what I'm saying? So they knew those things. That was the newest technology. And, and automobile. I, you said automobile? I said automobiles. I said planes and automobiles. Now, if you look at the generation before that, you go back into the 1800s when there was no automobiles or no planes. The generation would look at boomers and be like, you guys got wizardry going on, witchcraft, metal objects flying through the sky. What the hell? What are you talking about? Yeah, they did have boats though. The yeah, big ships. But, but the point that I'm making is that's the fundamental difference between boomers mm-hmm. and understanding Generation X mm-hmm. would be the same thing as those 1800 and later generations trying to understand boomers. You can't understand. The generation that's born into a world that the world is different Mm -hmm. when the world was not like that when you were running things Mm -hmm. that's why the world is different for us as generation x's than it is for silent and boomers the problem was once the world changed for us Mm -hmm. we had the mentality of boomers and silent of we want better for our kids But we didn't have that work ethic because we didn't have to. Like, we mean I got to work for 60 years at $12 an hour and and then retire an old man of 70, you know, with a pension and a fixed income of $1,000 a month. What? Right. (laughs) Like, my grandfather retired and he's a wealthy man with 80,000 in the bank. I make that a year. Like, what? Right. That's what? A lot for that, them. Exactly. What? Exactly. I'm like, dude, when he drove his car, he paid a nickel for gas. Right. Like, <laughs> that's why it's a lot for you. You ain't paying for that. You bought your house for ten grand. Like, who are you talking to? <laughs> but the problem was because we didn't have that worth, that work ethic, we had no ability to put that work ethic in our kids because. The world became easier for us with the advent of computers. So we just taught our kids, we want better for y'all. So here's us doing better. Mm -hmm. So you inherit better. And then our kids was like, 
It's not like you had them doing extra stuff. Right. You was doing everything for them because you wanted to get an education. You didn't want them to be out trying to get. I was working right. at 15. Yeah. I didn't, even, I didn't even force mine to do that because I'm like, well, no, you got to be go to school and get all this. Which, yeah, did yeah, we messed up. Yeah, we messed up. did differently. Because I did too. 15 and 8 months, the second that they said I could work, I had a job. Yeah. Work you know, I was going to school and yeah. get off, get out of school, take my ass yeah. to work. You had to take that. You had to get a work permit. Work, work <laughs> permit, exactly. You had to get that exactly. Work permit. Yeah. Work, work permit. My kid's yeah. about to be 21 in two months. Uh, my youngest. You have no idea what a work permit would mean. <laughs> what do you mean? Right, uh, right, right. You mean get a job? <laughs> no. We were not allowed to work when we wanted to right. until we hit a certain yeah. age and we had to get certified. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like, he'd just be like, yeah. why would you do that? Why right, wouldn't you right. just... That's the, why would you want to work at 15? Right. Like, like, why would you, you know, just get money do? from your mom? <laughs> like, yeah. Nate, what? Damn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, that yeah. does kind of make sense. Yeah. yeah. Shut up and get in this car and let me take you where you want to go. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, I, yeah. you know, our childhood, I don't, my mother ain't never take me to a friend's house. We walked or we, took public yeah. transportation like everywhere. Home, else. You, you had somebody friend. that Take me to what friend's house? What are you what? talking about? Like, yeah. I, if, I told you earlier about the whole. Right. Know, but I'm even what talking about house once we, once we, right, because when we were in New York, we only played with like Billy and, and all my buddies. We played with the kids on our block right. and that was it. But once we left New York and we moved to Virginia and we had friends that lived on the other side of like neighborhoods, that was the first time we knew what a neighborhood was. Right. It was crazy. Um, my mother was like, uh, was. <laughs> I'm not wasting my gas driving all the way over there. Right. Uh, you know how to walk? Me and my brother <laughs> get the mumps on, right. and we walking across more towns, right. like going to visit our friends and whatnot, and didn't have to walk back. Yep. But you know that was some. But and once my kid got to the age where I was doing that, yeah. I'd be like, Nah, man, there's too many crazies out there. Right. And I'm like, It was the same amount of crazies. Yeah. Right. Same amount. Of <laughs> but something triggered in me, like, yeah. Nah, yeah. you ain't ready Different. for this world. Right. You know? <laughs> get in this car. I'll take you where you gotta I go. Doing walks, humps like that at nine. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And being a Lasky kid. I was there. Yeah. Being a Lasky kid. Like the whole the whole concept of a babysitter. Like I do I don't babysitter? Shit. I didn't even know what that was. Mm. It was either my auntie or somebody was at the house. And you better not open up that door. Right. Reading rainbow. Reading rainbow. Right. If if we were lucky, we'd get home, open the door, and an auntie or a grandmother was at the crib. Oh, hey. And if they weren't, uh, you go in there, open the door, close the door. Don't you open that door until uh -huh. I get home. Yep. Can I go outside? Why are you even asking that? Right, yep. right. You know, go outside till I get home. Uh -huh. Get in there. Get that homework yep. done. Uh -huh. You know you know where your snack is. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you seven. You know what's up? Yeah. Like we used to yeah. take the public bus to school. I was right. seven. Right. My brother was at five. <laughs> right. We getting on with our bus bags. Right, right. Get on the bus. Go to yeah. school. Right. Seven o'clock in the morning. Buy ourselves. Ding, ding. I wouldn't dare think of doing that to my kid. Uh -uh. And now, seven years old. <laughs> Imagine that. It's almost like you like. What was it's you thinking? Now the world's so different. Now so I get worried when my kids getting an Uber. I was like, yeah, because it's so crazy yeah, now. Crazy right. Now. Mm -hmm. I don't trust them to get in a car where they know who's driving. Right. But my parents was sending me on public transportation mm -hmm. with all types of wild mass transit. Back on time. Right. You couldn't be late. So right. what you mean you missed the bus? Right. What, what you mean you missed the right, Oh, right, you got right, your right. ass beat. It was like because that I'm was their security. You. Right. Right. you bring your ass back home. They were finna go and do no extra have uh -uh. somebody walking with you now. The uh -uh. security, you brought your ass back. Right when we know you supposed right. to be back. Right. Don't miss no bus. Don't be talking to your little friend. Mm -hmm. Don't be going on somebody else's house. Cause they gonna exactly. find out. Somebody gonna tell. Somebody gonna everybody tell. know you. So mm -hmm. yeah, it and was yeah, and Generation X broke that system. Yeah. We broke it. So yeah. the kids were entitled. They got rides everywhere. Yeah. They got they got snacks. Cell phones. Uh huh. Sleepovers and all, all that. that. Go to school and and you know, you don't no longer, you know, pack your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. You know, yeah, your parents no, give you, you money to man, go buy hell stuff hell for yeah. lunch. You might even leave and go to, to right. McDonald's or something. Oh yeah, high school? You know, oh. Just, what? 
kids leaving school to go get something to eat. Hell yeah. Unheard of. Not at all. Unheard of. But that's what these kids yep. know, and that's what they understand. Mm -hmm. Like, my niece, she's uh, four, 13. 13 or 14 now. Mm -hmm. They get hungry in class. These moms be Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. And meet, meet yep. them at the school. <laughs> Uber Eats come and bring the right, food to the right, school. Right, right, right. I was like... How you pay for it? Yeah. Oh, I just use my cash app. Mm -hmm. Cash? How you getting cash? They gonna be all on your cash app, Ma. Can you cash out me some money? Right. What? And we do it too. Uh -huh. <laughs> because we understand it because we know that we know how to speak the lingo of yep. that generation because yep. we were the first to be in that. Yep. So we understand it. The generation before us will have no clue. Mm -mm. Like she literally would say the same thing to her grandmother and ask for that. Why? <laughs> Call call your auntie. Tell her tell her do that for you. I don't know what you're talking about. Yep. I was like that for a little while when I was um before I had the cash app and, and Zell. That's because you were a my boomer <laughs> pretending to be an exit. Uh, <laughs> my niece, no, nah, because I was getting these he, checks. He, he write a check. Yeah. I was getting checks. No, no, nah, I was getting checks from the city. Oh. Uh, so she was like, she I can't mama add in personal yeah. checks anymore. I, I know people, but not me. No, I'm is I'm getting it from the city because the city's still paying these benefits that we were getting for people that I had living in my um this two family I have in the city in New York mm -hmm. and she was one of the um you know the renters so I had her managing the building managing all the you know paperwork getting collecting all of the rent so when it was coming you know you the, the checks came at a certain time I had her doing it for me like go to the bank to cash it for me she's like yeah. Well, Uncle Gab, why don't you just cash that? I mean, um, we call that scanning the um, yeah. checks. You know, and doing the image. Yep. Mobile Thank deposits. You know. Mobile deposits. She was like, why is this just mobile deposits? What bank are you in? I'm like, I'm with, um, at the time, uh, son, um, in the, in the okay, York, got, but go ahead, go ahead. You're right. TD Bank. It's TD Bank today. And she was like, um, yeah, you can just use it, the mobile deposit. And, you know, I said, yeah, okay, it's easy now. Now, I, I learned a way to just speed up the the process instead of waiting for it to go to the bank, just wait online. I like, the bank's gonna close, and da 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 da. That's See, the way it's going. Online. And that's because you walk the the line, because you're half a boomer, half an exit. So you know how to comprehend it. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't come natural to you because you got them both. So you gotta somebody gotta sometimes spin the wheels to get it going. Yeah, sometimes I just don't. It's, you know that taboo, you don't trust it? No. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that, that's, that's the boomer in you. Yeah, it's, it's, that's the boomer in you. That's the boomer in you. Like, uh, that's the boomer in you. All my money disappearing, cyberspace, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hocus yeah. pocus. There's all that voodoo. <laughs> you never know. And she was like, come on, just, go, just do it that way. Yeah. Um, just real quick, that just reminded me. I got this, this new scam that came to my email the other day. I don't, this is completely off the subject, but I, it tickled me, man. So I'm going through my emails uh -huh. the other day, and um, it's one of my other accounts, one of mine, and it's labeled uh, Bear, one of my Bear mm -hmm. email accounts. Uh -huh. And I don't check it often because it's it's where I send all my spam and, and dumb okay. stuff. It's what I use whenever I'm like, hey, I think I might order that. I'll use that account so it don't go to my main email. Okay. So I happen to just be going through there, and then I notice something. A email from something that said uh, Bear Bear mm. Which is the nickname for my dog mm. So I'm like oh. And it had an image too I was like ooh mm. Okay Somebody sent me pictures of my dog I'm like, okay. <laughs> So I go to click on it right And it's a PDF in it mm. And I'm like mm. Huh So I open the PDF right And it's like Yeah So Don't uh, disregard this email But I know who you are. Ooh. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh, oh do we? <laughs> so I'm reading it, right? And they say, yeah, I'm I'm letting you know that I had the ability to hack your computer. And in hacking your computer, I've seen uh, the lowdown and unsightly stuff that you've been up to. And I've seen the porn... Uh, the, the porn sites that you've been to and stuff like that. Uh huh. Then it said in big letters, and don't try to go and delete the, the browser history because I already took snapshots of everything and I was able to hack your camera. 
So I've seen uh, you you uh, playing with yourself to the <laughs> point. So I'm like, Are you so I'm like, the damn. I'm clutching my pearls. I'm like, is nothing sacred anymore? Oh, <laughs> so I'm reading this. I'm like, huh? Somebody's pretty good. They got past all my defenses. Right. Mm. And he's like, yeah. So, um, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to allow something uh, which I typically don't do because usually people like you disgust me because of just the things I've seen you doing. And just to let you know, uh, nice room, by the way, because I use your camera and I looked around in your room and I was like, <laughs> damn, oh, man, it's a pretty nice room, right? And he said, so if you don't send me what I'm going to call uh, privacy buddy here we go said i'm going to turn around and i'm going to forward the pictures from your browser history along with the snapshot of you uh playing with yourself yeah. next to the porn pages to everybody in your contacts and i was like okay well first of all like i said this is a dummy account right so there's no contacts in there all right and i was like send away the <laughs> I don't care. And I was like, it didn't even did. So? Right. Right. <laughs> Everybody knows who I am. Right. So what? Yeah? Uh, y'all look at the point I beat off every once in a while. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> like, who you, who, like, who you holding hostage? Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you got the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> so, like. so he's like, yeah. So if you want proof, at the bottom of his letter, you could see the proof. So I was like, I'm curious. I'm like, Yo, did he really? Right. So I scroll down, like I, I stopped reading. I'm like, I want to see the pictures. I want to see if he really got my room. So I scroll down, and it's like pictures of like some woods, like <laughs> some bullshit random picture. It's like, yeah, like I said, nice bedroom, huh? And I was like, come uh, again, somebody in the house. Man, not somebody only. So I'm like, not only is this a bullshit, I'm disappointed because I was hoping that somebody really like, right. like, me. like, get my my adrenaline flowing. Like, I really got to step my security game up because I'm really good with my stuff. And somebody really get in, take control of my cameras and everything, and, and gonna take nice room. By the way, I'm like, damn, this mother really got me. And then tell me you're going to send pictures. I just thought that was funny. Like, that really made me laugh. He said, and then he said, oh, and by the way, so if you send me and you can send it, I'm going to, uh, he provided a QR code at the bottom. Uh -huh. And he said, you just uh, take a picture of this and then you send me with Bitcoin, you send me, uh, I think it was 20, 2150 in Bitcoin. I have I have a special bug in your system that once I receive the money, it will automatically delete everything I have on you. Mm. If you don't send it by this time, then my system will automatically send all the dirt that I have on you to everybody in your contact list. So he's don't try to delete this because then it will automatically send. <laughs> so they trying to bribe you over $21 of Bitcoin? No, $2,100. Oh, yeah, it was like $2,150. And it was like... <laughs> so I was like... I was like, don't bother trying to respond to this email or trace it back because you can't find it. What was the name? Habib or something like that? Nah, it was, it was like Veronica Ilgiskis. Was some, some random made-up name. And I'm like... I, I really want to write you back. Like I was like, for real, Let, let's negotiate. How about I send you fifteen dollars? What, what can I get taken away from? 15? Like I wanted to have fun and talk to the dude, and but it was it was just funny. And then of course now I scrolled through my spam, and it was like five of those in there. Mm. I was like, oh, I'm disappointed. I get the phone calls like that. Yeah, I'm so disappointed. I just hang up. Oh, I got a, I got an awesome one. I got an awesome one, and he had me going to phone call. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker called me and said he was with the, um, the Douglas County Sheriff Department. Oh gosh. And was wondering why I skipped, uh, I skipped court, mm. and the judge had issued a bench warrant. Mm. Uh. And I was like, 
like completely take it off guard because he just he called me and i was like wait what like what do you and the number said it said us g-o-v-t uh n-u-m in capital letters so i was like I mean, you see the US GOVT, you're right. like, so you're like oh, this oh, must okay. be legit. Right. So I'm like, what? What, what, what? What's going on? He said, yeah, you were supposed to go to court on the 20th or whatever the month that was, mm -hmm. and you didn't show up. So the judge is issuing a bench warrant. And I was like, I didn't even know I had court. He's yeah. like, yeah, you were supposed to be in court. He said, yeah, isn't your name so and so, and, and you live at so and so and so. So I was like, Shit. <laughs> I was yeah. like, Shit. did he have a, a local accent? Or did he have no, no, no. It was local foreign. and everything. Wow. Local and everything. And he said he was um, uh, deputy so and so from the sheriff's department. Really? And he said this was over a federal matter of something that I was supposed to pay and that I didn't pay back. And I'm like, and it was, it was. Um, one of the one of the government funded things I did for my business mm -hmm. that um it was like a a, a a what do you call it a a, a interest free loan mm -hmm. and I had paid off the interest free loan already okay. oh. but they were like yeah there was a part of it you didn't pay so I was like just him bringing all this up I was like details. So I'm like, yo, this sounds legit. So like, it's rising up in me. Like the chest is bumping. I'm like, nah, bro. I made the, nah. So, and I'm out in the streets and stuff. I'm doing stuff. So I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I'm not near any of my records. What do you mean? And he's like, yeah, so, you know, you got to get this taken care of. And um, we're just giving you a courtesy call. And um, you could check, you can, Verify all this by calling the Justice Department. Mm. And I was like, oh, this must be legit because he's literally telling me to call the Justice Department. Right. And I was like, all right, who would I talk to? And he, then he goes, yeah, just call this number. And he gives me the number to call. Uh -huh. And he said, ask for agent so-and-so over at the Justice Department. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, all right, so call that number. And then um, uh, once you speak to him, He'll tell you uh, to give me a call back. So he hung up with me and then I'm nervous, but I didn't call it. I just kind of went about my day like, what the fuck is going on? When I get home, I'm going to you know, go through my records and find out what's going on. He calls me 10 minutes later and he's like, uh, Mr. Bear, you didn't uh, call the Justice Department. They told me that you didn't call yet. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this must be legit because I sure did call. <laughs> so he got me like, like the blood is flowing. I'm like, this is a good one. Like, I'm like, well, I, I, I just didn't have a chance. He got me stuttering and shit. I'm like, he's like, yeah, you need to get this taken care of because um, we're actually tracking your location right now. And oh. if you don't, if you don't take care of this, oh, um, you know, we're going to um, just come pick you up and. You know we're gonna place you under arrest because there was a bench warrant Isn't issue, crazy? Uh, and I was like, went a little too far. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how they have to be believable. I was like, bro, 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 bro. I got stuff to do today. I got no time to be in jail, and I got no time to be racing to that's Mexico. Come out with the payment. Well, you just right, this payment. right. He kept, he kept hit me, hit me, hit me, <laughs> and when he heard the stuttered, he was like. Well, there is something we yeah, can do. Yeah, that's, like, that's how they get you. That's how they get you. I was like, what can I do? He said, well, you can go ahead and you can settle up the amount. Because the amount says that it's for about uh, 6500 mm. But we can settle in. Right, that's what he told me. And I was like, the so whole amount below. was. Right. He said, but we can settle in for twenty six fifty seven. And I was like. Okay, so if I pay you twenty six fifty seven, the bench warrant and everything go away. So yes, we've been authorized by the judge that once we receive, <laughs> and I was like, I did, right there, that's where the brain went. Click. Wait a minute. How's a deputy going to tell me when a judge is authorizing? So I was like, wait a minute. So if I pay you twenty six hundred dollars, twenty six fifty seven, all this will go away. Say so yes, the judge already authorized it. 
Huh. So now I'm driving around in Douglas County. Right. Right? <laughs> Douglas County is this big. Right, right. So you know what I do? I'm like, let me take my ass to Douglas County right. Courthouse. Oh, because right. it's right there. It's right there. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm like, let me just do a drive down there and go holler at them. Because there's literally sheriffs and deputies that stay there. Right. And then I could go and talk to every judge because they're literally all right there. Right. So I'm like, let me get to the bottom of this because I don't know what this guy's talking about. So I'm like, well, which judge was it? Is it probate? Is it the magistrate? Is it supreme? Is it? Mm-hmm. it it's the Douglas County Court judge. Mm. Broad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, what here, here come the sheepish grid. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I got you now. Man. Oh, it, is it? Is the Douglas County uh, judge? Oh, okay. <laughs> how, mu- how much you want? He said, well, it's going to be twenty six fifty nine. Mm. I said, I tell you what. I'm a very busy man. Right. I ain't got time to be playing with these little numbers. Mm. How about I just go ahead and pay y'all 10000 and just be done with it? Mm. Well, you could, sir, but we only need the twenty six hundred. Mm. I was like, "Oh, okay. Um, where do you want me to pay that?" Well, uh, judging by your location, there's a couple uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, machines Bitcoin. that you can just go with Bitcoin. the with the Q, QVC the QR code mm. and just register it. There's one that's off of like Fairburn Road, and there's another one over here. You go to either one of those. And if you go within the next 10 minutes, we're tracking your location. So we'll know when you get there. We're going to set up. What did he say? He said, we're going to set up a, 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 a GPS, a, a GPS, a, a, a GPS a police escort. Something like that. He said, he, said, so he, go he, oh go, he said, we're watching you on GPS. So we're going to turn around and we're going to have a GPS escort. So we're going to allow you to get there so no cops pull you over. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah, they full of it. <clears throat> oh, at that point, I'm having fun. He went deep on yeah. I'm having fun it's now. I'm like, oh, yeah, we have level. fun. So I'm like, okay, all right, I'm going right now. I'm going. And he said, all right, um, what do you need to do first? I said, well, uh, first thing I got to do, uh, I'm getting ready going to work. Uh, I got to go tell my boss that I got to go uh, pay this money real quick. Right. And then I'm going to come right back out. And he was like, all right, how long is that going to take? I said, it should only take a couple minutes. Right. And I was literally just going into Best Buy to go buy something. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want to be on the phone while I was in Best Buy. So I told him I was going into work. So I go in Best Buy and I go yeah. buy the shit I'm going to buy. Yeah. Right. And he calls me like four times while I'm in Best Buy. I'm like, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> and then I come back out and it's like, Mr. Cole, yeah. we we know that uh, you're still at work. And um, <laughs> and you haven't left yet. I was like, oh, do you? Right. I said, yeah, I, I know you do because you got the, the GPS police escort. So right. he, he said, yeah, so we know that you haven't left. And I was like, all right, well, I'm in the car now. So where's the place? And he said, yeah, it's right over here. I said, are you watching me? He said, yeah, we're watching. And I was like, okay, I'm waving outside my window. Can you see me waving? <laughs> it's, not, it's not that kind of view, Mr. Miss, 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 Mr., uh, Mr. Bear. We can only see, you know, your actual vehicle. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to turn my wheel. Can you see it moving around? <laughs> are you fucking with I, oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah, I'm in there. And then, so I go straight to the courthouse, right? right? And I said, okay, I'm here. So I just got to get out and go take care of the payment. Okay, yeah, we see that you're there. <laughs> I swear, man. I, I will probably, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, man. So I get out of the car. I'm still, I'm still bugging off with the QR code to pay yeah. off a, a court. <laughs> I, I go into the courthouse and you know they always have the, the sheriff deputies at the metal detectors out in the front, right? So I go in there and I'm like, all right, hold on a second. I got to talk to the person in the front. So I put him on hold and I was like, excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, I got this guy that I think is scaring me on the line. I just want to make sure. Do you guys have a, a deputy so-and-so that works for the Douglas County Sheriff's Department? And the guy looks at me go, hell no. <laughs> hell no. We don't have anybody that name. Right, right, right. And I'm like, are you sure? Because, I mean, you're saying that. I, he said, 
Douglas County is not as big as you think it is, right. sir. It's not right. that big. He right. said, no. I know every every deputy mm-hmm. that's right. in here. Right. I said, well, could you do me a favor? And he goes, he's, what's that, sir? I said, well, I got deputy so-and-so on the line. Right. <laughs> could, could, you, could you talk to him and maybe uh, uh, uh-huh. figure out what department he's at? Because he's telling me that I need to go pay this money towards any, this right, thing. Right. And the actual deputy's like, sir, that's a scam. I was like, I know. But could you just <laughs> talk to him? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, sure, I ain't doing anything else. Right. <laughs> that's my phone. And he's like, he's like, yeah, can I help you? And I guess he's talking to him, but he goes, he goes, <laughs> Sir, this is deputy so and so from the the Douglas County Courthouse. Who are you? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he hung up. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, okay. I was hoping you played with him, little boy. And he was like, "Yes, yeah, sir. That's a scam, and it's been going around." He said, "Unfortunately, they have gotten a few people." Yeah, they. I was like, elderly, yeah. Right. And I was like, yeah. Well, I came straight up here. I wasn't playing that. And that's another another a lesson for the baby boomers and the ex the ex in yeah. the um <laughs> silent era of who would have went through with it maybe. Yeah. You know, who's vulnerable. Because they oh they they vicious, man. Oh, yeah. They vicious. Mm. I think he even he texted me back like three days later and he was like, mm. uh Mr. Bear, I, I assure you this is not a scam. <laughs> we need to get this taken care of. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll, I was like, yeah, where do I need to go again? And he just never wrote back ever again after that. Maybe by the time I'm 80. Uh, right. Well, hopefully fun. not. <laughs> hopefully you'll get the scam. Charity. Word. But um, what do y'all say we wrap this one? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up today's show. Uh, it's been another great one. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we're going to see you on the next one. But to let you know, I've been King Bear in the building. Michelle K. And this is the truth, Sigur. And we're going to see y'all on the next one. Y'all be good. Peace. Peace.